Hello and welcome you're watching NDTV 24 7 my name is Kitty Behel the first phase and the biggest phase of the 2024 Lok Sabha elections is done and dusted with the more than 60 percent turnout that has been recorded today the first phase of polls saw voting in all 39 seats of Tamil Nadu 12 seats of Rajasthan 8 seats of UP 6 seats in MP 15 in the Northeast. In fact, Manipur voted for the first time today after months of ethnic strife. There have been some uh, sporadic incidents of violence that were reported today. Well, the Naxal hotbed, hotbed of uh, Bastar also witnessed voting today amid tight security in the first phase. And so did three seats in North Bengal. First time since the abrogation of Article 370, there was voting in Jammu Kashmir with the hot seat of Udampur going to polls. Well, uh, Several big faces have been in the fray that included eight unit ministers, two former chief ministers, one former governor, that Tamilisai Sondarajan, who was contesting from the South Chennai seat, and a number of key leaders who were in the fray today. Well, the BJP has uh, uh, targeted to win 370 of the 543 seats and they have a mission. They've aimed that the NDA will be crossing the 400 mark. The Congress, on the other hand, is calling this a fight to save the democracy. Today, uh, uh, Manipur, uh, both the seats went to polls. However, the, uh, the outer Manipur uh, uh, polling is divided into two phases. A uh, part of outer Manipur seat has gone to poll today. The other part would go uh, in the second phase. But it was in the inner Manipur seat where there were at least half a dozen incidents where uh, there were incidents uh, which were reported of violence, where uh, there was an incident of firing, uh, EVMs were uh, damaged at least in four uh, polling stations. There were uh, uh, allegations of proxy voting by armed people, uh, allegations of armed people coming and threatening polling agents. There was a, a video that went viral of the Congress uh, candidate for Inner Manipur, Professor uh, 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 Bimal uh, Akujam, uh, actually arguing with the uh, senior police officials, uh, uh, alleging that his polling agent has been threatened and uh, thrown out. So these uh, uh, were things that were reported. In fact, uh, Congress asking for repolling in several polling stations. Whether the election commission does this or not, we'll get to know. However, 160 uh, additional companies of uh, central forces were sent to Manipur, apart from the forces which were already there for the last one year uh, to contain the violence. But uh, this 160 uh, companies were sent for uh, polling. Uh, so therefore, by and large, the polling was peaceful. In uh, overall, uh, Manipur registered over 68% uh, polling, which is far, far less than what it used to be in past. But given the circumstances in which uh, uh, people have voted, perhaps uh, uh, one would say that uh, people did uh, turn out. However, the most important part was that there were special arrangements, special booths made for people, over 25,000 people who live in relief camps to come and vote. Many of them came and vote. In fact, we did speak exclusively to the chief minister. He agreed that in some areas there were violence, in some areas there are still uh, uh, you know, issues there uh, and areas are sensitive, but uh, he felt that people have uh, taken part in the elections. However, if you talk about outer Manipur, uh, in Kankopi district, the uh, turnout was very low as compared to Churachandpur from where the violence started. All right, reports of sporadic violence uh, that have been coming in from parts of Manipur today. Uh, but uh, let's also now shift our focus. Let's take a look at this exclusive conversation we've had with Union Minister Kiran Rijiju, who spoke about BJP's uh, mission, uh, Charso Par, and the party's ambitions in the Northeast as well as the Southern states. We have uh, Union Minister of Earth Sciences and BJP candidate from Arunachal West, Mr. Kiran Rijiju, with us on the broadcast here. Thank you so much, sir, for speaking uh, to NDTV. Sir, the first phase polling has ended. Prime Minister Modi has set a target of Charso Par for the NDA. What is the sense that's coming from the ground? What's the sense you're getting on the ground? Uh, well, uh, uh, from the eastern side, from Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, and other northeastern states, it's a well uh, echoing the slogan raised by Prime Minister Charso Par. We are going to give a very substantial contribution in the NDS number. Although this Charso Par, Prime Minister has uh, echoed this slogan, but the slogan actually came from the people. So it's the mood of the people across the country. So this slogan is resonating with everyone. And I'm happy that from Arunachal Pradesh, uh, we are going to win both the Lok Sabha MP seats. And uh, we are going to sweep the assembly election. 
uh, because it's a simultaneous poll. Out of 60 seats for the assembly seats, uh, BJP is going to sweep. Uh, so it's a very positive voting today. I voted in my native village far in the border area and I've just come down. And in Upper Assam also across Northeast, I think uh, the mood is uh, just like it's el as elsewhere in the country. So we are very happy okay. that Northeastern region is substantially making good contributions because in last 10 years, Prime Minister Modiji has led the development for the Northeastern region. And we are seeing this uh, positive uh, you know, work of Modiji. Uh, from the ground, people are uh, paying back with this thank you note by voting for BJP. Okay, well, the BJP, of course, has made big gains in the recent past in Northeast as well. Now, you are a three-time uh, sitting MP from Arunachal West Lok Sabha seat. You've defeated your rival with a huge margin in 2019, in 2014 Lok Sabha polls as well. Now you're seeking a fourth term from this seat. How hopeful are you, sir? Well, this time, I think I will also uh, break my previous records. In 2019, uh, I made... Uh, uh, highest uh, margin ever and defeated my other rivals, uh, mainly the Congress uh, former Chief Minister Navam Tuki. He is contesting again against me along with some uh, six more candidates. Hmm. But um, the ground report which I have received so far seems to be um, improving my past records. So I am looking for some something around 75% plus. Uh, it could be possibly one of the highest margin in the country. So I'm very hopeful that, uh, uh, as in my case, uh, other constituencies are also going to have a very landslide victory for the BJP candidates. And in Northeastern, some of the areas, uh, we have uh, NDA candidates. So both BJP and NDA candidates, hmm. we are going to perform very well. Okay, so the BJP or the NDA, if I may say, of course, is looking to increase its tally in the Northeast. From 18 seats to many BJP leaders are saying the tally will go to at least 22. Uh, you, you think yes. it will further consolidate the BJP's position in the Northeast? Yeah, I think uh, in Assam last time Congress won three seats. Uh, this election in 2024, I don't think Congress will open its accounts. Uh, that makes our tally going further up. So we have only 25 Lok Sabha seats. I wish Northeastern region has more seats so mm. that we could have contributed more. Mm. But we have only 25 Lok Sabha seats and we will strike best ever result this time. Okay. So Mr. Rijiju, if I may ask uh, about the BJP's hopes for the southern states, well, for the BJP to reach the goal of 370 plus seats or for NDA's Char so par mission, southern states would be crucial too. Now, Union Home Minister Amit Shah, uh, while speaking to NDTV, has said that Prime Minister Modi's popularity will translate into more votes and seats in southern India. Uh, with that, do you see the BJP becoming a pan-India party? BJP's seat tally also increasing uh, in the southern states. Well, uh, Tamil Nadu and Kerala, of course, it is hoping to open its account there. Well, I see uh, a big gain in South India. If you remember, Tripura and West Bengal, BJP was zero just a few years back. In Tripura, mm -hmm. BJP could not even win uh, a corporation election. But we swept in 2019. And uh, you just see, uh, you know, it's all BJP. In a similar way, in West Bengal, BJP had no MP, no MLA. Uh, in fact, uh, till 2014, we didn't have a single MP in West Bengal, uh, except Darjeeling. So 2014, we got two seats in West Bengal, Asansol and Darjeeling. In 2019, we won 18. Hmm. So but Tamil Nadu has never been zero for us. In fact, we had won many seats in the past, six seats in 1998, like that. So I feel uh, Prime Minister Modiji's personal drive in the southern part of India has made a huge impact and you all are going to see a, a surprising election results, especially from Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Okay. So Karnataka has been always um, good for BJP 
and this time we are going to have major gains in uh, Telangana. I am also going to Telangana the after, then I am going to West Bengal for election campaign. Hmm. And uh, I could very well sense the ground situation. Hmm. So Telangana, Tamil Nadu, uh, Kerala, these are going to be major gain only because of Prime Minister Modi's popularity and his, his uh, you know, connect with the uh, uh, grassroots people. He is uh, connecting okay. with every section of society in the southern part of India. So it's no more a North India party. BJP is now very strong in eastern part uh, like uh, Urissa, West Bengal and Northeast. BJP is already dominating southern part of India also. BJP is going to have a major gains. Hmm. North India, West India, we all already dominated. So BJP is truly a pan-India national party whose presence is right there from Ladakh to Kanyakumari, from Gujarat to Arunachal Pradesh to Andaman Nicobar. So BJP is going to have the best ever performance in 2024 election. Okay. Uh, what would you say uh, for the Congress party? Well, the Congress party, of course, has their hopes high after their assembly poll win in uh, Telangana. The Congress is saying there is no space for the BJP in southern states. Mr. Chudambaram, we've sp spoken to just a while back, he said that the India bloc is going to sweep all seats in Tamil Nadu and the BJP has no space. Don't, please don't trust Chidambaram's words. Please don't trust Rahul Gandhi's words. We know in 2014 what Chidambaram had said that uh, he is swore by God that uh, their UPA is coming for the third time but they were wiped out. So uh, you will see the result very soon. Uh, Telangana result was, uh, uh, you know, it was a local uh, particular situation where Congress party got the benefit of the anti incumbency of the TRS. So, and Karnataka also very localized factor. But you will see Lok Sabha result will be completely different. Hmm. So, uh, Rahul Gandhi and his people are having a daydreaming. You know, if, if Congress is saying that um, you know, they are going to revive. It's a, it's like a, you know, completely misunderstanding of the ground situation. As long as Rahul Gandhi is there as their leader, hmm. we know the fate of the Congress Party. I don't want to talk much about Congress Party because people have rejected them. They don't have leadership. They don't have any vision. So Congress is today a rather less, uh, you know, completely directionless party. Okay. So people are looking for a stable and a strong government under the leadership of Modi ji. Especially hmm. if you see the international context. Today, India is one of the most stable country, be it uh, from economy point of view, be it uh, social, be it uh, military, be everything. India's stature is rising under the leadership of Modi ji. So, hmm. uh, every, everybody in India wants to see Prime Minister Modi as a, a Prime Minister for the third term. All right, sir. Uh, all right, sir. Thank you so much for uh, speaking to NDTV. Well, the results will be out on June 4th, of course, and uh, we'll have to wait and watch. Uh, uh, as you've been saying, BJP will definitely make big gains this time around as well. Uh, if that happens, the results will tell, of course. Thank you so much, sir, for speaking to us. Thank NDTV. you. Thank you very much. All right, uh, now shifting our focus now to this exclusive conversation that we've had with senior Congress leader P. Chidambaram. He's uh, confident of India block sweep in the southern states and also has responded on a number of issues. Listen in. So would you say that the Congress uh, has compromised or would you say that the Congress has been accommodative of uh, aspirations of regional players? Congress is recognize the reality of the ground situation. As I said, there are X number of states where the Congress is the dominant party. In fact, it is the only party which is opposing the BJP. In other states, there is a regional party which is a bigger player. We acknowledge that reality and allow the bigger player to take the lead. I have said this in several columns and several interviews over the last 12 months. Right. Mr. Chidambaram, um, you know, uh, the issue of electoral bonds has been brought up prominently by the Congress party over and over again. Amit Shah today said, and I've got a quote from him, in fact, this was in an interview to NDTV, he says, 
their parties, in other words, opposition parties, have also received donations through bonds. Is that extortion as well? Rahul Gandhi must tell people, yes, we have also uh, extorted. And the donation that they have received in proportion to the number of MPs is more than what we got, is what Amit Shah says. How would you respond? This is the problem. Uh, you, you draw these uh, false comparisons. Firstly, the Congress is not in power in the center. It has not been in power for 10 years. Therefore, we cannot extort any money from anyone on the, on the basis of that we will do your favors or this is a repayment for past favors or advance payment for future favors. So there is no comparison at all. This comparison is completely odious, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, we are a political party. We need to raise funds from the people, public, which also includes uh, rich corporates. If you close every other avenue, and the only avenue available is the electoral bond, what are we supposed to do? Uh, carrying a begging bowl and go around the country? That is the only avenue available to a political party. Therefore, we have to necessarily take that route. What is the choice? Unless Mr. Amit Shah says, we alone can extort, all of you beg. And well, with that, it's time for a short break here. More news and updates uh, continue on the other side. Stay tuned. Welcome back after the break. A trial court in Chhattisgarh's Raipur has accepted the closure report filed by EOW ACB after no case of uh, disproportionate assets was made against Aman Singh, who was the principal secretary to former Chhattisgarh Chief Minister Raman Singh. An FIR was registered against uh, Raman Singh's PS under the previous Bhupesh Bagel led Congress government. As per the court order, three years of investigation by the state EOW failed to substantiate the allegations of disproportionate assets against Singh and his wife. The closure report was filed by the Economic Offences Wing of the state government in December last year before the current BJP government took office. Well, the trial court has now accepted the closure report and the FIR has been quashed. Aman Singh has been a bureaucrat in the Raman Singh-led BJP government in Chhattisgarh and the principal secretary to the chief minister. In some more news now, at least four people were killed and several others are missing as a boat they were travelling in capsized in the Mahanadi River in Urissa. The incident took place when the boat carrying around 50 passengers was going from uh, Patharseni Kuda to Banjpali in Bargar district in Urissa. This is a tragic incident that has unfolded in Urissa. We are learning at least four people have died and there are reports of several people feared missing so far. All right, we have some more news now. The face-off between the ED officials at Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal continues to escalate after the ED said that Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has been eating mangoes and sweets inside the Tihar prison. Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal now has sought consultation with a doctor over video conferencing. Well, the Delhi Rouse Avenue Court has now asked the ED and the Tihar Jail authorities to respond on that. The order over the application... Uh, by Arvind Kejriwal has been reserved for Monday. The Aam Adi Party, meanwhile, has claimed that a conspiracy is being hatched to kill the chief minister in jail by denying him insulin and necessary medicines. Listen in to what the Aam Adi Party and the BJP have to say. Tihar Prashasan, ED, Puri Kendra Sarkar, court me aake Arvind Kejriwal ji ki insulin ki jo appeal thi, उसका विरोध कर रही थी बताएं भारतीय जनता पार्टी बताएं प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी कि अगर अरविंद केजरीवाल जी ने एप्लीकेशन डाली कि उनको उनकी इंसुलिन दी जाए उनको दवाई दी जाए तो क्यों केंद्र सरकार उसका विरोध कर रही थी क्यों ईडी उसका विरोध कर रही थी क्यों तिहाड़ प्रशासन उसका विरोध कर रहा था 
आज अरविंद केजरीवाल जी की डायबिटिक और इंसुलिन को लेकर राउस एवेन्यू कोर्ट में यह खुलासा हो गया कि जो डाइट प्लान था अरविंद केजरीवाल जी का जो कल से सोशल मीडिया पे भी था जिसके मुताबिक वो बार बार आम खा रहे थे उन्होंने छह बार मिठाइयां खाई वो बार बार पूरी छोले या तली चीजें खा रहे थे वो सारी बातें सच थी एक बात स्पष्ट हो गई कि अरविंद केजरीवाल जी जान ये सारी डाइट ले रहे थे क्योंकि आज कोर्ट के सामने ये आ गया कि ये जेल की ही डाइट जो उन्होंने खाई थी उसी का डॉक्यूमेंट है All right, we'll keep an eye on the developments on that and get you more. With that, it's time for a short break here.